regarding Finland and Sweden's NATO membership. Uh, Russia has actually given a warning to Finland and Sweden saying that they cannot be a part of NATO. Because the closer NATO keeps coming to Russia's uh, political boundaries, the more uh, troublesome it becomes for Russia to manage its affairs. And then the next one is the International Space Station. This will always be important because uh, this is where a significant amount of research happens with respect to the Earth and also because it is spaced in the lower Earth orbit. Because of these two reasons, it becomes very important. Meghadatu Dam, because of uh, the continuous issue surrounding Kaveri River. And also, uh, because the Meghadatu Dam is in news, also the Kaveri Water Management Authority and the Kaveri Water Regulation Committee are important. And then the basic RT-PCR testing. So this and this would become the most important ones for today. Most of it is related to paper 2 today, GS2. Now the first topic, please see where Finland and Sweden are. This would be your Sweden and this would be Finland. Do you notice that they are adjacent to Russia? During uh, uh, these two regions are extremely important from the perspective of uh, raw materials. Even during World War II, uh, Germany went for seizing of Sweden while Russia tried to occupy Finland even during World War II. So this has been a contentious issue from a very long time. Now, why is it there in the news? Sweden and Finland have dismissed Russia's warnings that their NATO membership would have serious uh, political consequences for the two countries. Russia is basically threatening uh, Sweden and Finland saying that uh, you know it might invade or it might take uh, actions against Sweden and Finland in case they get into NATO. Now, Russia has voiced concern about what it described as efforts by the United States and some of the allies to drag Finland and Sweden into the NATO fold and warned that Moscow would be forced to take retaliatory measures if they were to join the alliance. Now, now uh, the problem is that as it is, all these countries, there are several countries which are a part of NATO, especially Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. These three countries are already a part of NATO. So there are NATO missiles which are located over here. If at all NATO, if these two countries also become a part of NATO, like what we spoke of, NATO is nothing but a collective defense treaty. Which means that if you attack one country, all the others will get together and attack you. And it is majorly, it's a military bloc that is led by the Western powers, majorly by the USA. While after the World War II, there was another military bloc known as the Warsaw Pact, which was led by USSR. And the, this Warsaw Pact, it actually comprised of all the erstwhile Eastern European countries, which were under the communist influence, like Ukraine, like Kazakhstan, Belarus, all these countries were a part of the Warsaw Pact, which were a part of erstwhile USSR. After uh, USSR disintegrated, this Warsaw Pact also became, uh, it also got dis, uh, you know, taken off, it also re got removed. And now only NATO removes, which is the only collective defense organization that exists. Now, what Russia wants? What does Russia want? Russia and the West have been, uh, Russia and the West have had tensions ever since Russia started proxy war in eastern Ukraine and annexed Crimea. This happened in the year 2014 and proxy war in eastern Ukraine means in the Donbass region which is adjacent. Since all these areas were erstwhile part of USSR, several of these regions have people who are Russian speaking. Even, even a country which is as small as Moldova which is over here. This is Moldova. So even over here there is a region called Transnistria, which has Russian speaking population. Similarly, in Ukraine also, this eastern part, which comprises of Luhansk and Donetsk, this entire territory is known as Donbas. And this has again, ethnically Russian speaking population, which want a closer tie with, uh, which want closer ties with Russia. 
in fact in 2014 ukraine till 2014 ukraine was led by a russian supporting president known as yanukovych and he was deposed because of his opposition to deals with eu and in his place we had other presidents who came in, in the latest being uh, mr vladimir zelensky now russia has always had those uh, it has always meddled in affairs of eastern uh, europe eastern ukraine especially and uh, crimea okay in response nato sent reins- reinforcements to countries seen as vulnerable to russian aggression in december 2021 moscow set out its security demands in two documents this is what russia wants russia wants a proposed treaty with the us and an agreement with nato saying that nato will halt its eastward expansion it will not take up uh, countries like finland and sweden into its fold or ukraine into its fold and also russia wants nato to rule out membership for ukraine and other soviet countries and roll back its military deployments in central and eastern europe so whatever are the military deployments that the nato has done in this region russia wants to roll back all of them the deployment of us weaponry has to be taken out while the west believes that russia should not be dictating the foreign policy of these countries and they should be allowed to take an independent foreign policy though this sounds like as if the west is taking a very rightful stand it is also to be seen that russia has been under it has a dilemma uh, russians have a dilemma towards the west because even it went uh, after the dissolution of ussr in 1991 there were promises in order to not put up nuclear weapons or in order to not uh, expand nato towards the eastern part of the continent however uh, usa transgressed its uh, uh, agreement and it went on expanding into the east it started taking up countries such as hungary it took up countries with uh, like uh, uh, romania you know uh, hungary romania slovakia poland all these countries became a part of nato and that is not liked by russia because it feels that it is getting cornered and hence russia doesn't want any more expansion of nato nor does it want uh, for those missiles to remain in these countries still and this is what has been spelled in these uh, documents that russia has given out russian leaders have long been wary of the eastward expansion of nato particularly as the alliance opened its doors to former warsaw pact countries and ex soviet republics such as Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, all these countries are a part of the NATO and that becomes a problem for Russia. Okay, now that we've discussed this thing in detail, uh, okay, now, also uh, one more thing is that Uh, these countries till now they've had uh, finland and sweden they've had a very balanced stand they've had a militarily non alignment policy uh, but if they join nato then it will be clear that these countries are not non aligned anymore rather they will be a part of uh, the western uh, sphere okay, next international space station the russian space agency chief dmitry rogozin said that russia could respond to us sanctions by letting the iss the international space station from uh, by falling from space now what is the international space station okay now international space station is used actually for performing several experiments in zero gravity atmosphere the iss is governed by the international space station 
inter intergovernmental agreement this is the agreement that governs the international space station it was signed in uh, november in january 29th 1998 by the 15 governments involved in the space station project the intergovernmental agreement allows space station partner states to extend their national jurisdiction in outer space to the elements they provide such as if at all there is a laboratory that is being offered by usa like say for example this picture that i put up now it says that this canada arm dextre columbus all these they have separate countries which have launched them so their jurisdiction extends to these particular areas so the rules are set by those countries which own them now the basic rule is that each partner shall retain jurisdiction and control over the elements it registers and over personnel in or on the space station who are its nationals according to article 5 of the international space station intergovernmental agreement this means that the owners of the space station which are five countries which are five entities united states russia european partners japan and canada are legally responsible for the respective elements they provide whichever country is providing whichever element that country shall be responsible for that particular element and for whatever happens over there now however uh, you should also remember that uh, mostly in the international space station the astronauts don't live for more than 6 months because then they will start having permanent effects on their metabolism okay uh, the first piece of equipment on the international space station was launched in the year 1998 and subsequently other components were added slowly if you see it is zarya and unity node by usa which were launched first and all the others have been added later on okay now the first crew assembly that got launched onto the iss was in the year 2000 this was the first time crew got to the international space station in order to perform experiments and since then it has had several uh, people who keep visiting it in order to perform experiments also the iss is uh, usually at an altitude between 200 to 400 kilometers from the surface of the earth it is in the lower earth orbit known as leo now lower earth orbit it stretches off until about 1000 km say, altitude of 1000 km now between 1000 km to uh, 35000 uh, more like yeah 35000 km no you have the middle earth orbit now at the 35000 km orbit you have the geostationary or the geosynchronous orbit geo orbit at 35600 km while this is the middle earth orbit between uh, 1000 to 35600 now okay uh in case of liability what if any thing happens or anything goes wrong okay it is known that as under the liability convention which has been taken up uh, by the copo us uh, committee on peaceful uses of outer space the agreement establishes a cross waiver of liability which prohibits any of the five partners or the related entities to claim against any other partner for damage sustained as a result of international space station activities in case now russia uh, it's threatening to you know deorbit iss out of space now in case something happens the other countries cannot you know sue russia why because of this particular liability clause which says that none of the other countries can sue the other country for any liability caused by it now mm, okay what uh, you need to know more about the international space station 
Now, what does the International Space Station do? It is majorly for it is majorly for conducting of experiments. Apart from this, it is also a docking uh, region for space shuttles to fuel up again. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, the International Space Station is a space station or a habitable artificial satellite in the low Earth orbit. Uh, we just spoke about lower Earth orbit and the uh, other uh, medi middle medium Earth orbit and the geostationary Earth orbit. It is important to know that mostly uh, the TV related services are conducted from the geostationary Earth orbit while uh, which is okay. now in the geostationary satellite uh, in the geostationary orbit we have mostly communication satellites uh, then uh, geostationary satellites over here now communication satellites then these are often used for uh, TVs or for phones etc. Now then moving on for example I can give uh, GSAT of India is an example which is usually placed in the geostationary satellite in the geostationary orbit I am sorry in the low earth orbit you often have remote sensing satellites you have uh, remote sensing satellites as in stuff like uh, resat okay now in the middle earth uh, medium earth orbit you have mostly GPS based satellites this is the application uh, your uh, GPS is actually placed in the middle earth orbit uh, application okay this is based on multiple satellites which are placed in the middle earth orbit now these are navigation satellites navigational satellites Now, the other things about uh, the International Space Station are, it is in the lower Earth orbit. Its first component was launched in 1998, like what we spoke. It is now the largest human-made body in low Earth orbit. It circles the Earth in 92 minutes. And it completes 15 orbits per day. The International Space Station serves as a microgravity and space environment research laboratory in which the crew members conduct experiments in biology human biology physics astronomy and several others okay now what are the other uh, international space law treaties the committee on the peaceful uses of outer space is the forum for this international space treaties like what we spoke any treaty has to come from uh, deliberations that happen through this particular committee now this committee has actually given out five international treaties till now one is the outer space treaty the Rescue Agreement, Liability Convention, Registration Convention and the Moon Agreement. Now, uh, we spoke of the Liability Convention already. Similarly, you can read about the Moon Agreement which uh, talks about how nuclear weapons can't be located on the Moon and it should be in the greatest interest of uh, mankind to use outer space for benefit of mankind. Now, moving on, Meghadatu Dam. Protests are going on for the construction of Meghadatu project on River Kaveri. Uh, now, Karnataka is uh, intent on constructing this dam in order to provide drinking water for Bangalore. Earlier, the National Green Tribunal closed the Sumoto proceedings for spot inspection to find out whether Karnataka has made any preparations to build a reservoir at Meghadatu without getting any environmental clearance. Now, 
the Green Tribunal actually took up this petition to check if Karnataka had started its constructions on Mekadatu project. But later on, it itself closed it down because the Supreme Court took up the case uh, to look into the merits of the Mekadatu project. And hence, the National Green Tribunal closed down its Yomoto proceedings. Now, so, this case is currently in the Supreme Court itself. Now, the 9,000 crore Mekadatu project aims to store and supply water for the Bengaluru city. Also, 400 megawatts of power is to be generated through this particular project. It was first approved by the Karnataka state government in the year 2017. And it also received approval from the Ministry of Water. And uh, it is awaiting approval from the Ministry of Environment. Why does it need approval from the Ministry of Environment? It is crucial because around 63% of the forest area of the Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary will be submerged if at all this Mekadatu project happens. Now, when a project happens, there will be a lot of water that will be dammed behind this particular concrete dam. Now, this water often submerges large swaths of area. Now, it says that it can, uh, Mekadatu project can submerge around 63% of forest area, which is under the Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary. Now, Tamil Nadu has approached the Supreme Court against the project, saying that the amount of water share which is pending to Tamil Nadu gets affected because of this. Tamil Nadu's stand is that the project is against the final order of the Kaveri Water Disputes Tribunal in which the Supreme Court held that no state can claim exclusive ownership of waters of a river. The Supreme Court actually looked into this Helsinki rules on uses of water, though India is not signatory. Remember, India is not a signatory of the Helsinki rules on use of water. But this says that in the case of inter-country rivers, no particular country should treat that particular water body as it belongs to its own, rather it is shared heritage. Similarly, the Supreme Court held that the river Kaveri belongs to the entire nation. It does not belong to any one particular uh, state. It also held that the reservoir is not just for drinking water alone, but to increase the extent of irrigation. Now, Karnataka says that it has proposed this only for the sake of uh, drinking water because the Kaveri uh, verdict as given by the Supreme Court said that there should not be any additional uh, there should not be any additional activities on the Kaveri basin in order to increase consumption rather the current consumption has to be maintained as it is but if Karnataka starts building reservoirs for the usage of irrigation there will be more people who will come and who will settle down and they will start using more and more water which is a violation of that Kaveri Water Disputes Award. According to Tamil Nadu, Karnataka has no right to construct any reservoir on an interstate river without the cons uh, consent of the lower riparian state. Karnataka, where the river originates, is the upper riparian state. While Tamil Nadu, where the river flows into before joining the Bay of Bengal, is the lower riparian state. Now, moving on, Kaveri dispute so far. In uh, 1974, Karnataka started diverting water to its four newly made reservoirs without the consent of Tamil Nadu resulting in a dispute. Hence, Tamil Nadu went to the center. However, the center did not frame a tribunal until the year 1990. This was also on the verdict of Supreme Court which under the mandamus writ asked the centre to frame a tribunal and it took 17 years further after this in order to arrive at the verdict. This is because in the year 2002 there was an amendment which said that the tribunals should give a verdict before five years and hence there was a verdict that came out in the year 2007 
it held that Kaveri water should be shared between the four riparian states in normal rainfall conditions. In the distress year, a pro rata basis shall be used, it, it said. The government again took six years and notified the order in 2013 only. The verdict of the Kaveri Disputes Tribunal was challenged through a special leave petition in the Supreme Court. Special leave petition under Article 136 of the Indian Constitution. The final verdict of the Supreme Court came in 2018 when it declared Kaveri as a national asset and largely upheld the water sharing agreements arrangements as given by the dispute tribunal and it reduced the allocation of water from Karnataka to Tamil Nadu which means that it increased allocation to Karnataka. This is because Karnataka was not willing to release water to Tamil Nadu. Hence, the Supreme Court was forced to increase the allocation of Karnataka. Now, as per the Supreme Court, this was the final allocation. It also directed the centre to notify the Kaveri management scheme, which the centre did so through the Kaveri Water Management Authority and the Kaveri River Water Regulation Committee. This particular Kaveri Water Management Scheme was formed under Section 6A of the Interstate River Water Disputes Act 1956. Please remember this. Now, further, what is this Kaveri Water Management Authority and Water Regulation Committee? Now, this both these were framed under that particular scheme of Section 6A of the uh, Interstate River Water Disputes Act. Now, Kaveri River Management Authority, this basically verifies along with the Kaveri Water Regulation Committee, they verify and they control the uh, release of water if the states are doing enough, if they are doing sufficient uh, functions necessary to reduce the consumption of water in the basin and all of that is taken care by these two committees. Now, it has its headquarters in New Delhi. The centre notified the Kaveri Water Management Scheme under Section 6A of the Interstate River Water Disputes Act for smooth implementation of the Kaveri Tribunal Award. The authority would comprise of a chairman and eight members besides the secretary. Out of the eight members, now this is common for both Kaveri, even the Kaveri Water Regulation Committee has the same one chairman and eight members. Out of the eight members, two each will be full-time and part-time members from the centre while the rest would be part-time members from the states. So, four members from the center and four members from the states. The chairman should either be a senior and eminent engineer with an experience of water resource management and handling of interstate water disputes or an IS officer with an experience in water resources management. Now, he shall have a tenure of five years or till the age of 65, whichever is earlier. Now, the authority will exercise power and discharge such duty for, expedi for expediently securing compliance with the Supreme Court order. If the authority finds that any government of the party states, namely Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka or Puducherry do not cooperate in implementing the decision of the tribunal, it can see seek the help of the central government for the implementation of the same. If any delay or shortfall is caused in the release of the water, the authority will take appropriate action in order to find that state or in order to release the water immediately. Now, the Kaveri Water Regulation Committee is also the same uh, because the Water Management Authority will supervise the operations of the reservoirs and with the regulation of water, uh, it uh, supervises the operation of reservoirs and the regulation of water with the assistance of the regulation committee. Both these act together in order to supervise reservoirs and regulation of water. Its members are the same eight members, one whole time member chairman plus one representative from each state, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, that will be four members, one representative from the Central Water Commission and Indian Meteorological Department, also a representative from the Ministry of Agriculture and one member secretary. So that would be eight members. Next, moving on, RT-PCR test. 
recently dubai has lifted the rt pcr necessary testing for fully vaccinated persons now what is rt pcr it is nothing but reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction it is a very simple concept okay now under this what will happen is that first it's better to read it from here please remember that coronavirus is made up of rna not dna it's an rna based virus however in order to detect that coronavirus rna has to be converted to dna and this is done using reverse transcription the rt pcr so this rt reverse transcription is used to convert rna to dna a reverse transcriptase enzyme converts rna to dna copies of the dna are then amplified now this polymerase chain reaction is nothing but for amplifi- amplification of the dna in order to increase the numbers of that particular dna that is formed increase it in order to detect if coronavirus is there or not so under that polymerase chain reaction what happens is that copies of a segment of dna are created using the enzyme called polymerase the chain reaction signifies how the dna fragments are copied exponentially one is copied into two two are copied into four and so on so these dna fragments are multiplied into huge numbers and a fluorescent dna binding dye called the probe is added to the dna which shows the presence of the coronavirus on a fluorometer so please remember all these words a fluorometer and a probe in order to identify the virus so first transcription is done and then after that multiplication of the dna using polymerase enzyme is done in order to increase uh, the dna so that visibility of the virus becomes more and the virus can be detected now this will be very different from a rapid antigen test because in a rapid antigen test it is a very simple test and the biggest difference between these two is the time taken it is a test on swab nasal samples that detects the antigens it directly tests the antigens antigens are foreign bodies foreign substances that induce an immune response in the body that are found on or within the sars cov2 virus it is a point of care test performed outside the conventional laboratory setting and is used quickly to obtain a diagnostic result like rt pcr the rapid antigen test to seeks to detect the virus which is the antigen rather than trying to detect the antibodies which are actually bodily responses to the virus both of them actually test out the antigen they find out the antigen rather than trying to seek out antibodies and the biggest difference is that while the rt pcr test takes a minimum of 2 to 5 hours the time taken for uh, R, the rapid antigen test is hardly 30 minutes and it is much 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 faster okay now moving on bakra bees management board what is the bakra bees management board the uh, what is the news regarding it the union power ministry has made amendments to the rules governing the appointment of member power and member irrigation on the bakra bees management board from punjab and haryana respectively thereby removing the stipulation that these two appointments need to be filled from the two states only now these appointments can be made from any of the four states including rajasthan himachal pradesh delhi okay now under the new rules notified by the ministry of power officials from other states are also eligible the two members are appointed by the central government after selection from a panel of engineers forwarded to the ministry of power by the respective states now what is the bakra bs management board 
It is a board dedicated to the service of the nation and is engaged in the regulation of supply of water and power from the Bakra Nangal and the Bias projects. For these two projects, this particular board takes care of water and power uh, requirements to the states of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Himachal Pradesh, Delhi and Chandigarh. Following the reorganization of Punjab in the year 1966, please remember the year, Punjab and Haryana were allocated a share of 58 and 42 percentage in power projects related to this BBMB. But later, Rajasthan, Himachal Pradesh and Chandigarh were also given a share. Now, uh, hence all of them have an equal share in this Bakra B's management board. Now, this particular board is a statutory body formed under the Punjab Reorganization Act. Okay, what are the functions? Its functions are for the regulation of water from Satluj, Ravi, Bias to the states of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan and the others, uh, the other states of, it's basically water supply from Satluj, Ravi, Bias to the states of Punjab, Haryana and Rajasthan and the regulation of power generated from Bakranangal and Bias projects to states of say Himachal Pradesh, uh, Delhi etc. Construction of new hydro projects within and outside the BBMB system. Now, Bakra Dam is built on Satlaj River. It is Asia's second tallest dam with a height of around 207 meters after Tehri Dam. The Gobind Sagar Reservoir of the dam has a capacity to store about 9.34 billion cubic meters of water. So, remember the name of the reservoir. 